Never in my life as a young artist did I think I would be this excited about an equalizer. Pro-Q3, for those of you who might be unaware, I'm sure you are, but it's the literally industry standard best equalizer ever made in my opinion. I'm sure a lot of producers would agree with me in saying that this is probably my number one used plugin of all time. FabFilter just dropped Pro-Q4 today. Um, I didn't hear anything about it beforehand. I literally just woke up and saw it on someone's story, on Fabian Missouri's story. So of course I bought it right away. I dove into it and there is some insane, super dope stuff that they decided to add. Just when you thought Pro-Q3 couldn't get any better, they somehow upped the ante. So today we're gonna talk about some of the new features, what it's capable of, and if it's an upgrade that I'd recommend grabbing or not. Before we hop into the video, quick announcement for you guys. I recently dropped a super fire, complete start to finish music production course. It's designed to give you every single tool you're ever gonna need to produce professional quality music in 30 days, either if you're totally brand new or if you've been producing for a while but you're just struggling to get your sound to the next level. It's over 17 hours of content distributed over 30 days of learning. We also have a super fire community where you can hop in and ask questions, free monthly sample packs, Packs, all kinds of cool stuff. Also, we've recently worked out a deal where if you sign up for the course, we can actually give you guys educational discounts on Ableton Live, FabFilter, Isotope, Sound Toys, Kilohertz, Arturia, and Output. So you could literally save thousands of dollars. And as of right now, the course is on sale, so it costs less than dinner. So definitely worth it, definitely worth checking out. Let's get into the video. You'll notice right away that the interface is a little bit different. So the first feature I noticed that's super cool and super helpful is basically they came up with this idea where you can kind of sketch where you want your EQ band to be. And just like when you're adding an EQ band manually this way, based on where you put it, it's going to recommend a type of EQ band. So if it's up here, it's gonna recommend a bell. If it's over here towards the top, it's gonna recommend a uh, low shelf. And so instead of coming in here and clicking and dragging, now it's just a little bit quicker with literally just seeing where the sketch is, is going double clicking and then you can adjust it with your jog wheel or, or scrolling with your mouse or whatever it is. So right off the bat, somehow it's already faster with being able to kind of navigate around and and um, you know low pass stuff really quick or high pass stuff. I love that feature. Then we have this little paintbrush guy down here. And basically what this allows you to do is it allows you to sketch, like kind of draw in the shape of the EQ that you're trying to accomplish. So if I click on this, I can literally hold my mouse down and draw in a shape. How cool is that? And it's gonna do a high, it's gonna do a high bell, it's gonna do a low shelf, it's gonna do another bell here. Super dope. I love this feature. Um, and then we can come in here and obviously adjust these if we want, make these dynamic, do do anything. But um, I really love that, especially if you if you know what you're going for with your shape. I'm gonna dip this down here, boost this here. Super dope, love it. Then we have a new feature which is called Spectral Dynamics. And this is pretty interesting. Basically the way it works is, I like to think of it kind of like Soothe, where previously we've had the dynamic EQ, which is totally game changing. There's nothing like it. It's almost like a type of compression or, or dynamically EQing certain frequency bands based on the incoming signal. However, with Spectral Dynamics, once you make a band, so let's go ahead and make this. Underneath the Make Dynamic selection, which we've had, we have Make Spectral. So let's look at the difference here. So what's happening, instead of just dipping this whole section here, the whole EQ section we've we've selected, now it's going after certain spectral elements. Anytime there's a peak or dip, it's gonna go ahead and target that. So it's basically grabbing only the things you need to EQ or duck, not the entire uh, frequency spectrum, which can be super handy if you have like resonant peaks and whatnot. Like I was saying, it's almost like Soothe. And we have more options if we click this little arrow up here. So this is gonna be the um, spectral control. So if we click this, we can switch from dynamic to spectral. Then if we hit these two little arrows over here, this is gonna give us a lot more options and control uh, for our spectral EQing. So this is gonna be the ratio here. Then we have attack and release. And then we have spectral density, which is basically like the width of the bands. So this little button over here, what this does is it switches it from spectral to sidechain. So let's say we want to use this feature, but we want it to duck from our webs over here. We're gonna go ahead and select that as our input on our Pro-Q, as our sidechain input. 
And then if we click this, it's gonna switch so it's ducking based on that signal. And then this is gonna allow us to just hear our sidechain input. And while we're over here on our EQ controls, we'll notice that um, historically we've had, I think four or five options for uh, the slope. So how steep the slope is in decibels. Now we have about eight of them and better yet, we can actually adjust these ourselves. So let's say we want like a, let's say we want a high pass. So let's do a low cut here and we could enter an amount. So let's say 34, let's say we want this at 30. So if you really want that much control, you can actually do that and you can enter the number now instead of choosing from four different slopes. So another option you might notice that is new is this little button down here. And basically what this does is this is a uh, character filter. So if you wanted to add like, if you wanted to simulate like some um, analog filter, kind of analog EQ uh, coloration, you can now do this here. So there's a couple options. Clean is gonna be like your standard transparent pro Q sound. Subtle is gonna add a little bit of warmth and then warm is gonna add almost like a tube saturation. So if we wanna kind of add that razzle and a little bit of character to our EQ, we can do that here. So let's look at another pretty cool side chaining option we have here. So let's say we're gonna do some dynamic EQing. We're gonna select our side chain input and then we have this option down here which says band. And basically what this does is this allows us to choose which section we wanna drive the sidechain signal in from. So if I select free, let's say for instance, so this is on the bass, let's say we want this to only sidechain to the kick and the strum loop. So we could put it over here, we could put it over here and have it sidechain to the snare. I don't know why we'd wanna do that, but we could. But if we put this over here, this is only going to react to where we select this band to be. So let's say we want this bass to duck from where the kick is at. And again, we can refine this as much as we want. We can change the attack, change the release, change the uh, Q amount. And then when it's on band, it's just reacting to where the band's at, like the stereotypical pro Q side chaining option. But this free option is super cool. It gives us a lot of flexibility to be creative with our side chaining. And so probably the most talked about and the most popular part of this pro Q4 upgrade is gonna be this option. So if we come down here and we click on our the name of our track, now it's gonna give us this view, which is just absolutely fire. Basically what this allows us to do is compare all of our different instances of Pro-Q4 against each other in real time. So if you remember from Pro-Q3, we could sidechain stuff and we could see where uh, there was frequencies colliding and where we needed to address them. And we could do that dynamically or with, with sidechaining. However, now we can see them all at once. So this is super cool, super unique function. <laughs> So I'm on a Mac, if I hold command and zoom in, I can make these bigger, I can scroll up, I can scroll down so we can see them however big we want so we're not limited to the super small view. So if we click this little red button right here, what this is gonna do is this is gonna basically set this track as our lead track for what other frequencies on other pro cues need to be adjusted and where there's uh, conflict. So this is our drum loop here. If we select this, now it's gonna show us on all of our other tracks where we're getting conflict with this track being kind of like the lead track for that example. So we can see the collision here, which is gonna obviously be our kick colliding with our, our wubs. Super dope. I absolutely love this feature, like the comparability and the side chaining options here, fire. So the other option we have here is this little pin, like this little thumbnail kind of option. And what this allows us to do is if we only wanna compare like our, our bass to our, our drum loop or our kick or something like that, we can select the pin option on both of these and then come hit this icon up here. And that's gonna allow us to look at just these two so we don't have to look at everything else. We can kind of get a good view of, of what we're looking at without having to scroll through and whatnot. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
In addition to scrolling up and down, we can actually use this little uh, menu over here to drag up and down and get a better view of what we're looking at. Another cool feature is that if we click on these, so if we come in here and click on the name, we can rename it. It's not gonna change in on Ableton, but we can rename it here. And of course we can come in here and we can make EQ adjustments on each of these right here from this view, super dope. We don't have to come in and find this EQ. We can literally just make the adjustments here and we can do pretty much everything from all of the pro cues just in this view. So absolutely insane. It's like, I don't know if you've been using pro Q to me, to me, it was almost like, how could they make this any better? And this is probably like the only feature I could think of that somehow makes pro Q better. One other cool feature that's worth noting is if we come up here and we hover over the right side, we're gonna get this little arrow. And this is actually gonna allow us to EQ match. So we can copy, and paste an EQ curve. So if we have like a curve here, we can copy this and we can come over here to this, a different track and just paste it right from here. Then we can do EQ match, which is a feature that's been with Pro-Q for a while. The last thing we're gonna touch on is gonna be a new EQ curve they added and it's called All Pass. So basically the way this works is it's kind of this crazy shape here. And this is actually in here so you can make phase adjustments if you have to. So just a cool little Easter egg they toss in there. If we come over here, we'll see All Pass, all the traditional ones. So overall, I would say Pro-Q4, fire. Absolutely grab Pro-Q4, totally worth it. The upgrade, I believe, is around 60 or 70 bucks right now. Again, if you buy my course, you're actually eligible to get half off FabFilter. So definitely worth checking out. That's linked in the description. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.